farthest we've been Oops. into developing this language, we've already slain two raccoons who couldn't do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled the next one out of the dungeon. <laughs> now what? Oh my God. Teach us your language or die. Good morning. Welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Andy, and I'm here with Jade, Glenn, and Ian, and today we're talking Trash Talk, a game where one player plays as a raccoon trying to establish language with a group of possums, everyone else at the table, by using random trash objects and word cards. Let's get into it. Welcome to Trash Talk, a game where one raccoon player is going to try to establish a common language with a group of possums, all the other players at the table, and they're going to do that using random trash. When the game starts, we're going to put all of our trash out on the table. Yes, all this comes in the box. We've got a stack of words and phrases we're going to try to find a common language for, and we've got a raccoon privacy screen. So when each game starts, we're going to choose who's going to be our raccoon player for this game. That raccoon player is going to choose three pieces of trash that they'd like to start the game with. Maybe we want that bow tie. Let's go for the plant here. And then how about the cocktail umbrella as well? The possums are going to take the matching object for each of those three the raccoon took out into the center of the table. Next up, that raccoon player is going to start our first round by flipping three cards off the top of the deck. And in this case, they got book, help, and cave. Now they're going to take a look at the trash objects behind their screen, and they're going to take a moment to secretly choose one trash object per word. Now they want to pick objects that they think correlate or apply to those words in some way. So if they look at the three words they have, book, help, and cave, they're going to look and say, okay, are there any obvious answers for which of these objects makes sense for one of those words? As I start to look at this, I start to think, okay, books and professors and bow ties, maybe that feels okay to me. Plants can grow in caves, so I think I want to put that one all the way out there. And then help, well, an umbrella helps you in the rain, right? So it's a helping object more so than a bow tie, certainly. So this actually isn't a terrible correlation for these three objects. Let's go with this. And once the raccoon's ready, they've been secretly working behind their screen here, the other players are going to do the same, except they get to discuss among themselves where they think the raccoon player may have placed each of these objects. And when they're ready, they're going to tell the raccoon, and the raccoon's going to reveal how they did. Now, the only way to advance forward in this game is to get a perfect match like this, where the raccoon lined up their objects exactly the way that the players lined up theirs. When you do that, you move on to the next round, which means we're going to take our objects back, and the raccoon is going to choose a new object that they would like to add in for the next round. So they're going to choose this little alien finger puppet. At the start of each round, we're going to draw as many cards as there are objects in play. So because we just added one more object, we're going to now move on to four cards in the center. But if there comes a round where everybody doesn't match up when the raccoon reveals their answers, this is your first chance out of two to fail in a round before the entire game's over and you lose as a group. So let's take a look at this example. The possums and the raccoon matched up on the bow tie here and on the alien here. So those we're going to leave done and good, but we weren't on the same page on the umbrella and the plant here. So those we're going to take back into the respective players' piles and behind the raccoon screen. We're going to leave the two successful cards out on the table and we're going to replace the two failed cards with two new ones. So Stretch and Swamp are our two new ones. Now it's up to the raccoon to set answers for just these two cards, and then the players only need to match up on those two. If they get it right, that's fantastic. We're going to move on to the next round and add a fifth card. But if we're wrong a second time, that means the entire game is over. We all lose as a group. We're going to pick a new raccoon, and we're going to move on to the next game. We're going to keep adding more objects from the box as we keep advancing farther and farther into the game, and eventually we'll get to the point where we have 10 objects and we're playing 10 word cards out onto the table and trying to guess those all right. Remember, you have two shots at it, but that's your final round. If you get all 10 of those correct, you all win together. If you can't quite pull it off and you don't win in two chances, you lose in the 10th round and you'll have to just try again next time. All right, so this was everyone's first time sitting down to trash talk. There's not a ton of mechanics to the game, which makes it really easy to just sit down and start going. We played with four players today. Four felt like the sweet spot for me. I think anywhere between like four and six players is probably great, but it plays all the way down to two players and all the way up to eight. My only concern with two players is that while it would work perfectly fine mechanically, one raccoon setting up stuff behind a screen and then a possum setting up stuff and then them comparing and seeing how they did, perfectly fine game. You don't have that deliberation talk between all the possums, which is where a lot of the funny stuff in the game comes from, is people's ridiculous notions about what an object can mean. And you as the raccoon just get to sit back and laugh at the weird stuff they're coming up with and worry that they're not going to get it right. They're gotta get Aren't it they right. number two pencil? Oh, number two pencil Ooh. and... 
It takes two. The song had to be written by someone, and you write with a pencil. Dude, that's gonna be my Captain Hook sails on the water. Sails on the water. Uh, at night. At night. At night. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I've ever seen Captain and Hook, it was at night. It's, and he's a, he's a pirate. They steal gems. <laughs> All right. You good? Yeah. yeah. We're good. Yeah. Oh. Did you think of number two pencil? I did not, but I, I did think either. that you had to write the song. I did think you had to write the song. So I play a lot of clue-giving games, uh, party games, and this one is a really interesting take on that. Um, instead of using you know word association or color association or any other way to try and connect words to things you get to do it with these really weird household random objects um and the the way you have to bend your brain when you're in the raccoon role to try and think about how the other possums at the table are going to to react to where you position things and the words that are available to you and being limited by the junk that's on the table that you've selected um, felt really, really fun in trying to get creative with it and trying to think outside the box of, you know, what does this stuff mean? And it felt like we were animals trying to communicate two different languages, yeah. which is it, the, the goal of the game was to to feel that asymmetry and it, it felt really, really good. Um, and then when I was on the possum side, the trying to read the person and guess so the way that they <laughs> think about an object and the way they connect was really a neat kind of thought process and the banter that happened on the table of no 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 what about this oh but what about this weird niche knowledge thing and several times during the game those weird niche knowledge things rewarded you for thinking outside the box and trying to think like the the raccoon one of the things i really enjoyed about this game was um, i'm always looking for games i get to do our outings with our school age kids and to get them to embrace the silliness so a lot of these objects here are just goofy and it allows them to like think their own little connections and with a group of friends like eight and ten year olds could really get down and play this game and have a really good time just using their imaginations and creativity um, without like any borders on it you know just something like a dinosaur rolling car um, and just see where they take that with some of these words. <laughs> elder aliens. Maybe we have to be careful communicating about the aliens. Because I couldn't come up with another aliens. thing that was better for elf. That was the only thing I could come up with for elf. I mean, being these. careful around aliens is also fine. Do elves have diamonds? You can. Arwen has yeah. a diamond. Yes. Not really. What's the... I do think aliens are elf. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the endless expansion this game has yeah. for, uh, because you get these 10 items in the box. We added in one of our store pencils, but you could easily just find pairs of any items and add them in to give a, literally an endless uh, bounty of, of things that you can use. So it's like you can throw in, I got two rubber bands, I've got some buttons, I, you know, all these just random things you can throw in to have more stuff. Yeah, there's so much fun interaction with just the objects they chose to include, like the fact that the cocktail umbrellas are actually functional cocktail umbrellas. Like, you open a game like this and the cars actually <laughs> move because I'm like, you open a game like this and you expect it to be a bunch of just kind of like static plastic tokens. The thought process that clearly went into which 10 trash objects, I'm sure they had a pile of 80 at one point and had to narrow it down to like, what 10 work really well for this game, let's let people add their own ones back into the game, is so good. They did a great job with it. I do want to touch on the fact that it is an asymmetrical game. So one person plays as the, the raccoon giving clues and then the rest of the table plays together. But it is cooperative, so everybody wins or loses together, which I think is really great for a family game. When you bring kids into a game like this, having a parent run the you know, the one person role allows you to kind of learn the mechanics in a really neat way that doesn't put as much pressure onto, you know, a team versus team or a one versus one type of environment, which I think is really well done for, again, family games of this nature. Um, and it, I, I think it'll lean really well into that if you want to play it with uh, the younger kids at the table. All right, I think that does it for Trash Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a really good time with this one. We almost established a language, but we didn't quite get there, but I'm sure we're going to come back to it soon and try it again. For the time being, you can hit that like button if you liked the video. Leave a comment if you got one. Hit that subscribe if you want to see a new video from us every week. It's pretty awesome. And check out our online store. We got Trash Talk. We got a bunch of other cool stuff. For this week, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.